Hello everyone, it's Kene once again. Yeah, today I'm not going to use my camera, right? Because it's quite late and it is raining heavily outside. Fact is, I don't have enough light. So that's not going to stop us from solving another math problem. So I'm going to share my screen and we'll take a look at the problem. We'll talk about how to solve the problem and then we write the code to um to we write the code to implement our thinking you know in solving the problem right so i'll share my screen now okay guys here we have the question write a python program that accepts integers so in this case now i would simply i could just say digits that accept digits converts converts them to their roman numeral forms converts them to yeah let me just say converts them to roman numerals and displays the results. Write a Python program that accepts digits, converts them to Roman numerals, and displays the results, okay? Do you understand that? So guys, um, I am going to create a GUI, a graphical user interface using the Tikinta um, package, right? So that's just one part of it. Very basic, very, very, very basic um, GUI, so to say. You know, nothing too fancy because our major interest lies in the um, functionality of our program. Okay, so let's see. I, I, I want us to think about it. Say a user gives us the digits 1,689, right? How do we get the, um, the Roman equivalent? Let's look at the thinking. So I have 1,689. First, I need to um, yeah, map out the Roman numeral in relation to you know um, the Arabic numeral. So to do that, guys, before I continue with this um, explanation, I would like us to go back to um, what we learned about Roman numerals. Okay, so if you remember, um, one thousand in Roman numeral is the letter m capital m and say 500 gives you the letter l i mean gives yeah gives us the, the letter d this time right so i'm going to create something called a dictionary in python so it's um like it's a container right that holds values now these values are tied to keys. So to get the value, we need to reference the key within that um, structure or container called a dictionary. So that gives us the value. You know, we use the key to grab the value. Let's just, let's see what it is, guys. Um, I'm going to create a dictionary that would have a, um, digits as keys and then um, Roman numerals as values. So I'll say my dict, for example, that's my dictionary. Then I would have, now the major, those um, digits that have, um, that have a, um, Roman numeral equivalent. 
So 1,000 is linked to M. So what I'm saying here is, if I have this dictionary, my dict, which is like a container, and I need to grab M, I need to grab M, then I'm simply going to use the name of that dictionary. Then in square brackets, I'll take the key. So taking the key means that I'll get this output M. So that's just going to be M, that's it. Right, so I can store this in a variable, my dict square bracket 1000, I get M, the value that's connected to the key. Okay, so I'm going to create um, a dictionary that we hold Roman numerals where the um, digits will be the key. The digits um, equivalent of that, of that letter will be the key in the dictionary. So um, 900, we have a value of X M. So guys, um, let's see, you know, 100 is X and um, 1000 is M. So I have X and, and I have M. So to get 900, I'm going to um, deduct 100 from 1000. So whenever I do this, this, this um, sort of deduction, then I'm going to use the um, lesser of the two. So X is less than M in this case. So to get 900, you know, which is 1000 minus 100. So I'm going to take the lesser of the two X for the 100 and M for the 1000, that gives me 900. So that's how it works. So 900 is X M, 500 is D, 400. So let's look at the um, subtraction principle again to get 400. So we see that D, D is say 500, okay? And um, X Sorry guys, I almost uh, messed it up here. X is 10. Right, so I'm sorry about that. 100 is actually C. So I, I had to correct that. Then um, I have C as 100, right? So by doing subtraction, I can get 400. That is 500 minus 100. And I've said that once you have this sort of subtraction, then you take the lesser of the two. So I have as 400 C, D. So 500 and 100 taken out of it. 100 is C and then the 500 is D. So that's why we say 400 is C, D as a Roman numeral. Okay, so um, the next will be, 100 and we'll see that 100 is just c that's not a problem then um 50 so guys what's 50 50 is l okay so before i get to 50 i need something that you know is between that 100 and 50 Usually I am supposed to take 10. So in 10 is now, I'll take 10 of 100. So what is 10? X, and then the 100 is C. So 90, I'm, I should have 90 here. 90.
x removed from or taken from c, which is 100. So x is 90. Then you can guess what um, 40 will be, because I need 40 there. Again, for 40, I'm going to take, you know, in tens now, I'll take 10 from 50. So the lesser of the two will be the 10. And what is 10? 10 is X and 50 is L. So that's how we arrive at that. Then um, the next will be 10, right? 10 is the X. Then next will be five. And what is five? Five is V and last, what is, I need one. And then one should be, no, I need four here, guys. Four, what should four be? Four is I, IV and lastly, one one gives me i so you know how we got iv here five minus one so the lesser of the two is one which is i and then five is v so that's why four is iv one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve right um i'm missing a number somewhere, 400, 190, 50, 40, yeah. So guys, you know, yeah, I have 900 and afterwards 90. So I should have nine. So right after this 10, I should have nine, key of nine for the Roman numeral. So nine there will be, okay, how do I get nine? By subtraction, take one number off, and that is one. One is I, and then the 10, that gives me nine. So 10 minus one is nine, I X, right? Okay, guys, now we're going to make use of this um, container, this dictionary. Now let's look at it. Suppose a user gives this 1,600 and, 89 okay how do i get the roman numeral for this we're going to do something i call repetitive deduction repetitive subtraction right so i'm going to um subtract something say a number from what the user has given then i i will collect what is left and then try to do you know, that subtraction again using the current value. And if it is possible, I would go ahead with the subtraction. And if it is not, I will try something smaller. I'll try to reduce by something smaller. Well, let me just show us. So I have 1,689. Now the largest of this, of the keys here is 1000, right? So I'm going to try to um, subtract 1000 from 1689. Okay, so guys, um, it's possible to have that without um, getting a negative value. We mustn't get a negative value. So if that is the case, the remainder or rather what is left will be 689. So 689. So 689 left, okay, guys. So what is that? Whatever I subtract, I will get the value of it in my dictionary. So 1,000 subtracted and that 1,000 is M, right? Then I would, the new value now, having taken 1,000 from 1,689, the new value of 
um, the user input should be this now, what I have after the subtraction. So I'm going to make use of 689 instead of the former 1689. So I have 689. And I'll try to subtract 1000 from it again. So I'm going to do that. And remember, we said that you mustn't, after the subtraction, we mustn't get a negative value. So 689 minus 1000 is going to give us a negative value. For that, I know that I should not use 1000 again. And I'm going to try the next. So I'm going to go through this. Um, I'm going to go through this dictionary, the keys of this um, dictionary. So by position now, you see 1000 here. The next key is, so this kind of lies at position zero. At posi so we count from zero, you know, in programming. So at position zero, the key there is 1000. And, and I've tried to subtract 1000 from 689. What it gives me is a negative value. So I can't use 1000. Then I have to move, move the index from zero to one, the next one here, which is 900 at position one. 900, I'll um, try to do the subtraction. 689 minus 900. I see that a negative value will, result, will uh, be obtained. So I can't use 900. So I'll go to the next position, the next key position, which is 500. And I'll try to um, reduce that number by 500, okay? Which is possible. So I'm going to get something greater than greater than zero or equal to zero. But this time it's greater than zero, okay? So I will have, what would that be? 689 minus 500, that would be 189. So then I need to take the value of that number subtracted. So 500 in my dictionary, 500 points to this value, D. So I'm going to take D, right? Then again, I will take what is left as the new value of the user input. Then coming down again. So I've, you know, the last time it was 500, we um subtracted from that number so i'm going to try 400 this time and i see that 400 is not going to give us um 400 is going to give us a negative value as what is left and we don't need a negative value so because of that i can't use 400 i'll try 100 so so you just keep shifting um the position the key position okay so I'll try 100 now. 100 can be taken out of 189. Okay, so what is left is 89. And remember that I just removed 100. And 100 is what? What's the value in my dictionary C? So that will be C. Okay, then, then I'm going to have what is left as 89. Again, the last time um, I removed 100. So I'll try the 100 again, just to see if it's possible to take 100 a second time. So 89 minus 100. Oh, that's going to give us a negative value. Something that is less than zero. I mustn't have anything that is less than zero when I do um, a subtraction operation there. So 89 minus 100 can't be done. Then I'll try 90. Again, I'll see, I'll, I see that 89 minus 90 is going to give us a negative value, some, something less than zero. So that tells me that I can't use 90. So I'll have a way of, again, increasing the index so I can go from 90 to the next position, which is 50. Now, 50 can be removed from 89. And, you know, I wouldn't have a negative value left. 
So I'm going to take 50, right? Out of this. And what's left? I have 39, 39. Now I took 50 out of 89. And what is 50? The Roman equivalent of 50 is L. Okay. Then what is left? 39. I hope you guys understand what I'm doing. So 39, I stopped at 50, right? So I'm going to try to use 50 again. 39 minus 50, I'm going to get a negative value. So I'll move the index, just increase the index uh, value by one, I can shift to the next position. So this is zero, position one, two, three, position four, position five, position six, position seven. So you see the way um, I add one to get to the next position. So um, I'll try 40. Now, 39 minus 40 gives a negative value. So I can't use 40. I'll try 10. Great. So 10 can be taken from 39. So I'm left with 29. And what is 10? 10 is x. OK, the next time again, coming down, can you stop this? Wow. That's something I don't want. So double X, that's just X. And I'll try to, so I'm left with 29. Again, you keep trying that number, that um, index. This time, you know, it, it is 10 until it's no longer possible. That is until I get a negative value upon um, subtraction. So I can still take 10 from 29 and I won't have a negative value. So um, I will do, I'll go ahead to do that. So I'm not going to add one to the index here. It's still going to remain at that um, point. So 29 minus 10, I have 19. And again, remember that I, subtracted or took X off. Okay, so I'm left with 19. So yeah, that's what, but we get to do this in a loop actually when we come to the coding. But I just want us to understand, you know, how the, I just need us to understand the algorithm behind it, okay? So 19 minus 10 again, that's possible. Then I get nine as you know what is left so remember that i subtracted 10 from it and 10 is x 10 is x so i'll give the x value there i should just make this two so that it doesn't help me in any interpretation okay so i'm left with nine right we're making progress so I'll try to use 10 again, and then I realize that it's no longer possible. So nine minus 10 is going to result in a negative value. I need to now at this point move, increment the index. So by one, I get to this key, which is nine. Nine minus nine. So I'm not going to get a negative value, it's just going to be a zero. So even if it is a zero, I should still do the subtraction. I am not to do the subtraction only when it is less than, when the result is less than zero. So nine minus nine is zero. Then I subtracted, I um, removed nine from nine. So what is nine? Nine is ix. So I would have IX there. So that's how you keep um, subtracting this value from what is left, this value from what is left until what is left is zero. Until what is left is zero, then you stop the subtractions. Then the final thing you will now do as the answer is 
to get all these letters that form part of the Roman um, numeral. So beginning from the top, M, D, C, L, X, 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 I, X. So that's the value, that's the Roman value, Roman numeral value of 1,689. So I hope we understand the, you know, the thinking, right? Now let's get on with it. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to create the window now. You know, I said we are going to use a graphical user interface, and I'm going to make recourse to Tikinta. Okay, so I'm to do that. I need to import the module, this Tikinta package. Simply by doing this, type import Tikinta as TK. So that's an alias there for Tikinta, right? Then next I want to do is to create the window. So um, to do that, I'll just create that, um, create an object of TK class, which is um, TK dot TK. So that's the, the class there, which um, I use in creating this object, this window object here, win. Right, then taking the window, which I call win here, I will um, set a title. Win dot sorry, this should be TK. I need to indent, guys. So that's why it's showing that. Please, I don't know. I just keep forgetting this indentation. All right. So using that win dot title, I'll set the title. So I'll say D to R, that is digit to Roman numeral. Then next, using that window, I will. use the um the resizable method okay but before i uh, i um ask that the window should not be resizable i need to set the dimensions so i'm going to use the method the method called geometry to set the dimensions of the window and it takes this string say 350 by just using x by 300 right then make it not resizable i'm going to call resizable the method resizable and set the um height and the width point to um to four so i can increase the height and i can increase the width so I would just give this as the argument false for the width and false for the height. All right, so last thing I want to do for now, just for this uh, moment, we just want to see a window on the screen. So I'm going to now, even though I've created the window, I need to now make it visible to the user and then, it should remain there. So there's like, it, 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 it's a queue kind of, so it's a loop that just waits for events to happen, right? So to do that, make it um, appear on the screen and make it remain there, I need to add the window to method called main loop, just like that, and we are done. So we should see, a window 
pop up. Okay, so that's that's it, guys. This is the window, right? But there's nothing, nothing on it. So we need to do something about it. So I'm going to create some objects, some widgets, which are like objects. And to do that, the first I need a label that would um, tell the user what to do. So I'm going to create a label. I'll just call it. I'll just call it L1 and initialize um, a label, which I will just call TK. That's making use of Tkinter and create or initialize a label there. So an object, a label object is created, L1, right? Then I need to um, tell the machine where to put the label. So I need that master. And that master, that parent container is the window itself because I want to place the label you know, on the window. So I'll take win and set the text, set text for the label, what should appear. So it will just be um, digit to Roman numeral, just something like that. So it's created, but it's not visible at this point. Because if I run the program, let's see guys, So I, I created the label. So why is it not showing? Yeah, that's because we have not placed it. To create it is one thing. To put it somewhere, you know, on our window is another thing. So I'm going to use a layout called Pack. It just uh, makes those widgets blocks, blocks of objects on on um, our window. So I'll take L1 and pack it onto our window just by calling the path method, I have it added. So let's see now if it's there on my window. So that's a digit to Roman numeral, okay. Right, so I need, next I need um, a text in, input field, so to say. So it's called entry. That um, a method there is called the entry method. So I will take E, just call it E1 for entry. Then take TK method entry. Then initialize it by giving the parent container, which is the window object. And the window object then, um, yeah, I want to just set text empty. Right. Then just pack it, e1.pack, great. Nothing too fancy. Then next guys, I need a button, something that I can click for the calculation to happen. So I'll just call that b1, that's for button, tk dot, just please take note of the beginning capital letter button. Now uh, I need to put the button on the window, then set the text for the button, which is um, get answer or get Roman numeral. Then I'll pack the button, b one dot pack. Right, so, and you know, guys, when the computer has done the computation and has returned an answer, where should it place that answer? So I think that I, we need to, I need to create a, another, lab, another label where the answer will be displayed, right? So I'm going to call, I'm going to create L2, initialize it, TK, label, put it on the window, then set the text to 
nothing empty string for now because we don't have an answer yet right okay then i'll just simply pack that l2 dot pack all right so guys let's see what we have quickly run the program okay so i think we're making progress so block this is one block another block another block then there's the label where the answer will appear. So if I click this button, you see that nothing is taking place. Nothing is taking place. That's because we haven't uh, written the functionality. Okay, so guys, having done that now, let's go to our entry. You know, we are using Tikinta package. I am going to sort of create a variable that will hold the the input from the user, okay? So, and then and to, to hold it or to, yeah, to hold it, we need to know, we need to tell the system what to anticipate, what type of um, data you should anticipate. Is it int or string or Boolean, for example? So I'm just gonna say um, text variable equal to TK, or is set to rather set to tk int var. So I'm expecting integer. Okay, then I would set the argument here text variable text variable and set it to tv. Okay, I hope that's understood, guys. This is quite important. You need to set text variable to whatever variable you, you created here. So if it's string var, if you're expecting a string, this will just simply be string var, just like this. But I want it to be an integer, so int var. All right, now, guys, we'll come to this button here. This button, okay. And we need to create a command. The command should be um, held in a function. What should happen should come in a function. So I'm just going to say my func as the name of the function, but this function hasn't been created yet. Okay. Yeah, guys, uh, if you remember when we created that, saw that interface, the button and the entry field seem to be like, Mm, so too close to each other. So I'm just going to move the button down a bit. So I'm just going to pad it. So pad Y, which is vertically, pad it vertically and by 12 points, for example. So pad Y 12, when I'm, when I'm packing the button, I need to create some space between it and what um, goes before and after it. Okay. So yeah, guys, it's showing us an error. So we need to create that function. So I'm going to use the keyword def my func. I don't want an error yet. So I'm just going to, for now, I'm just going to use pass. Pass here means, oh, okay, we have something, but just um, don't throw any errors. Don't do anything. Just simply ignore for now. So I would run the code. So we see that space. If I put whatever here, nothing happens. So that button is not responding. It's just dead there. Okay, so now let's write our program now, the program that will do the actual um, computation. So. First, I need to collect whatever the user has put in once a, a user clicks this button, what command should run. So I need to collect that input. I would set it as my val, that is my value. And that should be the text variable TV that was created, you know, and use a getter a get method for it. So that grabs the 
value. And we said that it is an integer value, you know, int var. So this is going to, my value is going to be an integer, I, so, I suppose. Okay. There seems to be a problem. TV. TK. So why is that so? Okay, I think let me use um, string var. Yeah. I'll use string var here. Still a problem. What could it be? This is TV, TK. Okay. Why is there a problem here? So it, it's not about the string or the int. So I'm just going to return this to int to int var. Then um, TV dot set should be nothing. All right, guys. I don't know why this is a problem. Is there something here that I need to take care of? Comma, comma, comma. Um, uh, mm. All right. I'm just run this program. See if dot get line my funk. Type error, missing one require positional argument. String var. Um, sorry guys. my phone. Hmm, what could it be? Well, guys, I don't seem to know what the problem is for now, but um, in order not to stop our program, let me just import Tikinta. Just import Tikinta and just use it directly.
Okay. So this should just be from Sikinta imports all. I just need to bring everything. Right. Then um have this taken up. So I'm initializing directly. Still a problem, my funk. Oh, okay guys, I just realized what the problem is, right? It, this is a method, it's not a property. Wow, so that solves the problem, string var or int var. It is a method, not a property. So that should solve the problem here, right? Then we can go on. Then the next now, I, guys, the next thing I want to do now is um, get, let me take this, put it into this function. Just bring it in, in here. Then I'm going to set some variables. You know, we're like moving, increasing by one to get to the next index because the index is, is the number that we are to subtract. So I need to create a variable that will begin the index at position zero. The index will be zero there. So that's the default for that index. So I'm going to call it I, set it to zero. Then the string, which I call true. Now, you know how um, after all the deduction, we collected those letters, these uh, values as a Roman numeral representation of that digit. So I'm going to have an empty string ready to um, hold or accumulate all these values. I mean, all these uh, Roman numeral equivalents or representations of the digits. So I'm going to set it to an empty string. Okay, it's important that we set these variables. Then using my while loop now, I'll loop through. And as I do that, I make, the program makes the deductions or the subtractions, those the subtractions rather. So using a while loop, while, now we know we collected my val as the input. So my val, while my val, is greater than zero. So it's, it, it starts out greater than zero. Then I keep reducing my val until my val becomes zero. In other words, it's no longer greater than zero. So first I should now test to see whether when I, starting from this position, if I remove 1000 from my val, am I going to get um, zero or more in terms of the value, or will I get a negative value? If I get a negative value, that means I'm not to use the number, say 1,000. But if if I get something greater than what the 1,000 itself, then I can remove 1,000 from the number. Now there's something I need to create here, um, something another type of container that will just have all these keys as values in them, the keys, so that I can point to these numbers, these keys. So I'm going to create a container for these keys, specifying their index, the index of each of them. So I'm going to say, call this my keys. And simple, take the dictionary, my dict, and call the keys method keys, just like that, right? Then 
um, afterwards, I will set it to a list so that I can um, figure out the position or the index of the members of that list. So the keys of the dictionary become uh, members of a list or elements in a list. Okay, so now guys, I'm going to, so I can always get this, this key, I can get this key, right? Just by using my keys. So now let's go on guys. My, if, if my val is greater than or equal to, I mean, sorry, if my val minus, I need to do the subtraction first. How do I get, because I need to try to remove this first, this number, this um, key at this first index, this first position, which is zero, position zero. So I'm going to use my keys. You know how we get um, the value of, of um, an element in a list at a given position. So I'll just call the list, my list. Then at position I, beginning from this first position, which is zero. So that's what I is. Then I can increment the I to move from zero position to position one to position two to position three, just by increasing I by one. Okay. So if my val minus my list, I mean my keys rather, not my list guys, my keys, if my val minus my keys is greater than or equal to, please guys, we need to get it zero. That is when I take, for example, 1,000 from 1,650, do I have something that is zero or more than zero? In other words, no negative value. If that is true, then I will go ahead to remove that number, which in this case is 1,000, you know? So 1,650 minus 1,000, that's 650. 650 is greater than zero. So that condition is satisfied. I will now actually remove it. So my, the new value of my val will be my val minus the difference you know, between my val and that number that I'm going to subtract from it. My val minus my keys. Just like that. So my val is reduced here. So when it comes round again, it comes to this point. It is no longer 1,650, for example, it is now 650. 650 is still greater than what, zero. So it will run through this loop again. And that's what it keeps doing until my val is reduced to zero. So zero is not greater than zero. The loop breaks. All right. So guys, uh, I need to put this um, colon here. Okay, so guys, that's it. So I do the actual deduction. Then I need to collect that um, letter, which you know I'm going to add to this string. So I just keep pushing it. I keep appending it to this string. And that letter, remember, is the value that you get by the key. The key is what you subtracted. So you subtract the key, and the value for that key is what you are going to collect as the answer. Okay, so I'm going to have um, S or string rather, string. Then simply do SC are uh, the string that variable plus one. So whatever the value of this of this um, string, just oh not one rather just add add the value that we obtain by using the key. So the key at this point is I. I mean, the uh, index of the key at this point is I, then this is the key. My keys at this position, position I. Then I know that's going to be something like 1,000. Now to get M out from the, I mean, to get M from the 1,000, 
I will call my dict and give it the key so that I can get the value. You know, working with dictionaries, name of dictionary, I want to get the value of um, something in the dictionary. So I'll give the name of the dictionary and the key for it in square brackets, then I can find the value of that. So I'll take my dict in square brackets, then this here at position, whatever I say, position zero, what do I have there as the key? That's 1000. So that's what I'm going to put. I'm going to put my keys I. All right. So this is going to give me the value in the dictionary. So M or C, M or D, that's how I get it here. Right? Then, guys, now let's come back here. If when I have my value, like my value minus that key, the key at that point in the loop, and the value is not greater than or equal to zero, that is, it is less than zero. So that means I need to move. I need to move. I need to change the index of the key. Okay. So how do I do that? So if this condition is no longer satisfied, I know that it's time to move the key. That means subtracting by that particular key is no longer going to give us a positive or zero value. And I need to move to the next key, right? So I need to create the else, else just shift the position so that I can get the next key and try to start um, subtracting. So else I, increment I, just going to be I plus one. So whatever is the value of I, add one to it and store it back in I. That's what this is saying. Okay, guys, then we're almost there. Just one last thing. You know, we created a label to hold the answer and we called it L2. What's wrong with this? An arrow? Why is that so? Win okay, it was a case of indentation, right? Okay, so that's been corrected, right? So we created this label L2, label L2 to hold the answer. So I'm going to get it here outside of my while loop right outside the while loop and simply say L2 and call the configure, configure method there, configure, right? Then I need to reconfigure the, um, the text. So this time I'm going to set the text to whatever it is that we have collected in, in this string. You know, we kept appending those letters to this string. So eventually, having appended all the letters, I will now set the text of that label to be the string that we obtained by um, accumulating all those letters. So that's it. All right, guys. Let's see if this works. Let's see if it works. Run. So I'm just going to say, for example, 19. XIX, so that works. What about 68? LX 60 and VIII 68. 
So that works, guys. Now, finally, finally, I think I need to um, increase the fonts and make, make the text bold. So just very quickly, again, nothing too fancy. I'm going to import the font class there. So from Tikinta, import fonts, just like this. Then I'll create the fonts. Let's create the fonts just before initializing my widgets. So my font fonts class and this method font method. Then give the arguments. The first will be the family here, for example. I should take Arial. Then the next is the size, which is like the size of the font. So in this case, I think I should use 16. Then the weight, I want it bold. Bold, right? Okay. All right, guys. So that's my font created. The next thing I'm going to do is to, um, yeah, in initializing the widgets, I would supply the fonts. So here, first label font will be my font, just like that. Okay. So let's see. So that's bigger now, digit to Roman numeral. And I should do the same thing for the button. So let me just copy my fonts. Yeah. Sorry, that was an error on my parts. It's clumsy. Okay, so my fonts, and when the text is displayed, in this last label, it should have these um, properties. Okay, so that's it, guys. Let's run the program again. Great. So I think I need a, a, a large number now, say 2,874. Yeah, so MM. 800 DCCC, right? D is 500, DC 600, 700, 800. Then 874. 70 will be LXX and four is IV. So this is 2,874. All right, guys. So um, we've come to the end of this um, solving, trying to solve this problem and we have succeeded. I'm going to leave this file or the code on my website. So you can, um, I'm, I'm also going to leave um, the, the code or the files for the other, from the other uh, videos that I have made, okay? The website is www.thetutoraid.com.ng. So you find other Python videos, you know, this will be there, this, um, sorry, this file will be there and other my other Python um, problem solving files and then links to all my Python videos as well as other videos, you know, videos on Excel and um, um, using Excel for Moodle, imputing uh, or supplying questions to Moodle using Excel. So you have you have videos to all, all, so, so many things, you know. Thank you guys for listening. And I hope you do visit the site, the tutoraid.com.ng. Right, have a nice day. Bye.